we have two types of random variables. The first type of random variable that we've discussed before is the discrete random variable, which by definitions are variables which have finite or countable possible outcomes. Example of discrete random variable will be the variables on an experiment using coins. So let's say we're looking for the variables or the discrete random variables when you flip a coin three times. And in this case, our x value for the discrete random variables will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these are the four um, discrete random variables when you flip a coin three times. And let's say we're focusing on tails for this particular event. So another um, example of discrete random variables is let's say instead of flipping a coin three times, we flip it two times and hoping that it's, it will land on a heads. So x will be 0, 1, and 2 for your discrete random variable for that experiment. Now, continuous random variable by definition is variables which are usually in forms of decimals or proportions. So this time, the random variables that we're using is no longer finite because it involves decimals. So let's say this example right here we have to find or we have to list down the variables of uh, runners for the 100 meter sprint. Now when we're talking about this particular experiment our random variable x will represent decimals because when you time a sprinter running a 100 meter dash you're not going to record it as 7 seconds or 3 seconds or 10 seconds because if you don't include the decimals most of them will have or will have multiple ties for those particular runners because we're discounting the decimals so in this particular example since it's continuous random variables we'll have x which is our continuous random variables for this experiment could be 7.12 seconds, 9.003 seconds, 12.25 seconds, and so on. So that's the difference between the two random variables. One will give you a finite, finite or countable uh, possible outcomes, and the other one will return a decimals or proportions based on the experiment you're working on. Normal distribution by definition is a type of continuous probability distribution and in this example we are using continuous random variable to answer this type of question. Now for this example, scores on the SAT verbal test in recent years follow an approximately normal distribution of n, 505, and 110, wherein 505 will be the mean score for this SAT verbal test and 110 will be your standard deviation. Now the question is, how high must a student score to place on the top 10% of students taking the test? Since this is a normal distribution, we can represent it as a graphical display similar to this one. So this is your normal distribution with a mean at 505 points and we are concerned about finding the actual score of a student to be on the top 10% of the SAT that is being taken in this recent years using this normal distribution. Now to be able to solve problems similar to this one whenever you're given the mean and standard deviation and the distribution is normal, you can use the z-score formula to find the value of x which is the actual score that you need to have to be able to be on the top 10% of this population. So z of 0.90, I'm using 0.90 because I'm using this uh, right side of the tail of your normal distribution because if I use 0.10 I'll be covering this area and that's what we that's not what we're looking for so by using the formula the z-score for 0.90 will be 1.28 and your x will be missing because that's what we need to find mu is 505 and a standard deviation of 110 now using algebra we will be able to isolate x so we can solve for this problem so Get rid of 110 by multiplying 110 on both sides, you'll get 140.8, add 505 on both sides, so x is equal to 645.8. Therefore, to be on the top 10% of students who take the SAT, a student needs to score at least 646 points to be able to satisfy this condition.